Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the TCG Empire YouTube channel. As you can clearly see, I'm not Tyler today, but Tyler did have a uh, pretty severe family emergency come up. So I'm kind of surprising him with this at the moment. He doesn't know I'm doing this for him. But, you know, he's had a perfect schedule for the past 10 weeks and uh, I'll be damned if that's going to stop today. So today we are going over Trash Deck Thursday. This is the 10th installment. If you guys have been here since the start, we thank you greatly. If you guys are new here and you're not sure what that is, it's where we come up with a deck that's kind of designed, in theory, to beat the deck of the week. Now, the deck of the week this week was Urshifu VMAX paired with uh, Inteleon VMAX. And that deck really thrives on abilities, both from Octillery and from the um, Inteleon. Now, due to the numerous bugs in uh, Pokemon TCG Live, both of the cards that we wanted to highlight to kind of counter this deck are currently banned. So, it kind of works out that we're going to be going through an unusual uh, format for this video because we wouldn't have really been able to get gameplay with this either way. So, today, I'm going to be showing off the deck that we would have played had we been able to. And it is basically just the Arc Arrow Keys deck. This list is based off of the 17th place list from Milwaukee, I believe. Um, sorry if I got that wrong. I'll try and, you know, fix it if I can. But basically, we just swapped out the four clef keys for a 2-2 Gorbis, um, as we did go over in Tech Tuesday. This card is really good because it shuts down both the Inteleon and the Octillery. And then the Aerodactyl is really good because um, if you use its V-Star power, then it means that all of your opponent's Pokemon V in play have no abilities. So by using this V-Star power, you are shutting off Double Gunner, which is a very important aspect of the Urshifu Inteleon deck. And then we do have the extra layer of Ability Lock via Path to the Peak. And we're kind of applying the theory that was made when this deck was first you know thought of and it's if you have so many layers of ability lock if your opponent's able to answer one maybe even two of them there's no way they're answering three so if you really look at this inteleon has three forms of ability disruption because inteleon's gonna have to deal with path to the peak aerodactyl v-star and gorbis and then as the added benefit the gorbis is also going to be shutting down the Octillery. Now, if we did want to kind of attack with the Aerodactyl to prevent the Arc from being hit by Urshifu for weakness, it does get kind of costly because the Aerodactyl does have like kind of a milling effect for its attack on us. So to kind of supplement the weakness aspect, we are running a heavy V-Guard count with two Sharon's Care and a Pal Pad because funny enough, if you have a V-Guard energy on an Arc, then if the opponent, uh, Urshifu VMAX, comes in with a Gale Thrust, it'll do 300 for weakness, and then minus 30 from the V-Guard energy will actually leave you at 270, meaning you'll have 10 HP left. And so you can create an infinite loop of Arc V-Star that you can you know, just keep throwing at your opponent. And because you're shutting down Double Gunner, you actually um, are preventing them from building up that extra damage. And if you have Path to the Peak in play, that means they can't move damage with Alakazam. So even if they do manage to get spare damage counters here and there, they still not, might not be able to use them. So at face value, having Arc as your main attacker does seem kind of weird going into a fighting type deck, but the math is just right to where arc actually survives and makes it really annoying because even though you live with 10 hp and you could get hit by a yoga loop by creating that healing loop you're actually denying the yoga loop as well so while this deck may look very unconventional it in theory would do very well against um urshi intel so if you do start seeing a lot of urshi intel maybe this is something to take a look at but other than that, you know, it's 
a relatively standard disruption based deck. You know, we do have new cards like Iono to pair with the Path to the Peak. So you could even, in theory, you know, kind of go down a few prizes and then really lock your opponent out of the end game. Um, because, you know, if you Iono path them and you have Gorobis in play, then you're shutting off the Octillery's ability to be able to search for Karina's Focus, which, you know, I know that when I'm playing against like a Path to the Peak deck with Urshi Intel, I try to save that Karina's Focus if I can. So being able to shut that off with the Gorobis is just insanely good. And then, you know, basically you're just uh, two-shotting them, you know, because Arc with a DTE will hit 180, which is enough to two-shot both of the VMAXs. And then, you know, you do have the Aerodactyl to attack with if you want. So, yeah, this at face value looks like it's going to be a huge problem for Urshi Intel. Obviously, you could stumble in the beginning. You know, they could get a hot start. But if you both set up, I think this deck would probably win every time. Because you just have so many layers of ability locking and... Like, not only is it, like, just ability locking in general, but it's targeted ability locking. So, you're shutting off the entire deck at once, and you're able to, you know, survive their big hits, create an infinite loop, deny prizes, ability lock them, and just really make it hard for them to kind of get their game plan, uh, you know, formulated and just... Um, allowing them to not really play the game. So, yeah, I know this was um, a really weird edition of uh, Trash Deck Thursday. You know, this is not a standard format by any means, but like I said, you know, Tyler did have an emergency come up, and, you know, I felt not necessarily obligated, but I felt like he would really appreciate still getting a video out because he told me, you know, at the time of recording that, uh, it's one in the morning He told me around this time, it's like, Hey, you know, I'm not gonna be able to make it home. I'm, you know, just gonna not have a video tomorrow and maybe we can get something out super late. And I know that on top of what he's dealing with, the fact that, you know, he's letting you guys down is really going to take a toll on him as well. So I'm trying to do what I can to help him. So if you guys do still enjoy this kind of content, even though it's not the standard, Please smash the like button, drop a sub if you want. The content that he does per, put out on a consistent basis is really good, and he does put a lot of time and effort into these videos. And I know he has a lot of fun, and I know it would make his day to just hear back from you guys. So, yeah, if you guys not only enjoyed this video, but you enjoy the rest of his content, be sure to let him know down in the comments below. But, you know, as I said... This is uh, going to be the end for this very unconventional Trash Deck Thursday. I hope you guys still appreciate the fact that even though we couldn't get gameplay, that I still was able to present you with a deck. And may not be the best thing to take on the ladder, but if you guys want to play it against a friend, maybe, I think it would actually be really fun just to kind of see everything come into fruition. But yeah. Um, so my name was Zach. For those of you that don't know, um, I do help Tyler out a lot with his videos. And, um, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, and check back tomorrow for Final Standings Friday. Peace out, guys.